need to sit up. I think I should get a phone book to sit on. I don't think they make phone books anymore. <sighs> so what do you do? Sit in your iPhone? Yep. Oh well. It's time to shoot our annual review and preview of skis for the season because it's time to order new skis. So what we want to do here is talk about our impressions from the last year of Fisher skis and discuss the new cosmetic, the new models, what's changed and what's the same going forward. So let's have it, Amy. What's your impression of Fisher skis from the last year? Can you recap? It's been more or less steady for a long time. We've had the same cosmetic for three years in a row, thanks to COVID. Constructions haven't changed in a while. The introduction of the gliding sidewall in the 3D model was the last update, but that was a relatively minor one, although it changed the edge feeling of the ski. So what's your impression after several years on those? Um, I still think, you know, Fisher makes some of the best classic skis on the market. Um, for me, at least, I really like they have some very different models. And so it works in a really wide range of conditions, which we see here in New England. You know, they have the 902. If you get a soft 902, it can be great warm hard wax. A stronger 902 can be a great clister ski. Um, 8812s can be a great hard wax ski or a great little stronger ski can be a, you know, great ice clister ski. So I think they've got a nice stance. I think they make some of the best zeros on the market. Thanks to some of your help. Long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. Um, so I think they've got that, you know, they've, that's a really strong area for Fisher. Um, I feel like for the skates, um, I think a lot of the other brands have come a long way. And so where I was always love Fisher skate skis, I think I love some of the other ones, maybe a little more at this point. We might be entering the realm of personal preference here a little bit. I think Could be. Fisher yeah. has a, a super solid platform and they've been really yeah. good. But let's back up and talk about classic and differentiate those models and constructions just a little bit. Um, one of the things that I have recognized in the past few years is the strength of the 812 cold mm -hmm. ski. The So they're 802 Speedmax, mm -hmm. 812 camber concept, uh, longer running zones, but the cold model. And it's pretty different in terms of its camber from the Plus model. Mm -hmm. Plus model has a bit more compact camber with a high point back close to the foot and a little higher. And it makes more of a, you know, like a, a high riding punchy ski mm -hmm. with a center back. That ski is the one I struggle with the most in real hard wax conditions mm -hmm. because I feel like it's hard to keep it fast if the kick is accessible and it's easy. It does really well when we pick it pretty high and strong for like binder conditions even cold clister sometimes, mm -hmm. but um, it gets slow when it's low and it's hard to keep it really uh, running as free. Whereas the cold model, I feel like it puts a little more of the pocket out front. It's a little lighter trigger, a little more position driven, and you can run it really low and it can be very fast. And so we've sort of leaned toward that cold ski as a hard wax solution more and more mm -hmm. for people who like that light trigger feeling mm -hmm. with a Ford pocket. Um, so that's, that's an observation and something that I think is worth sharing uh, from the past few years is really good success with that cold classic ski. The 902 remains a real favorite. Uh, the consistency of the production is really good. In time, it's evolved from being kind of our favorite all around ski to more of a warm condition ski as it was originally intended. They've strengthened the pocket, maybe made it a slight bit more compact and more uh, wet snow or clister oriented with the high point a little further forward and a range of carrying heights that is just higher. Um, but I agree with you that the range is outstanding. The zero ski thing is interesting. Zeros are getting hard to find in the market because of the prevalence of skin skis and the companies all wanting to reduce the number of skews that are out there. So uh, zeros aren't really um, an option without uh, pre-ordering specifically way in advance. Um, we do have zero skis pre-ordered. Um, in fact, we have some of last year's production from racing coming for next year. 
um, as well as some new stuff coming as well from Fisher because uh, Fisher remains the go-to ski in zero conditions, in my opinion, just the most tolerant, broadest range, uh, zero on a race day is always a tricky thing because the traffic invariably makes the kick tough. Mm -hmm. Zero skis for just dumping down snow is just such a rare thing. It's really become a, uh, a stopgap when the waxing is super, super tricky in glazing high humidity mixed or new snow conditions. And if you've got zeros that can deliver kick in those conditions, then you're in luck and, and fissures are where we have the most consistency with that. No big changes going forward in the classic, except for the color of the skis that I'm aware of, I think. Which uh, is a, a nice color. <laughs> it's this. Is, oh, yeah. So these are next year's skis. Yeah. They glow. Yeah. No, they glow it, at yeah. twilight. Yeah. They full on light up. Yeah. I had these in Whistler and we were like testing right into the end of the day sometimes and yeah. they literally glow. Yeah. You like it? I do. I do like it. I'm unconvinced. I'm not sure about this geometric yeah. pattern on the side, but I like the I like the fresh color. Yep. Everyone's gonna want the yellow. Yep. So let's talk about the skate skis. Okay. Fundamentally the skate skis are unchanged, but there is the addition of a couple of models. Back up though. We gotta talk about the speed max as what it is and discuss what you don't love about it. And what I think is really the strong point of it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you have less appreciation for what they're doing now than you did a few years ago when you were always choosing Fisher? Or do you feel like other brands have just gotten better? I feel like other brands have gotten better. That's good. Because I think the Fisher skis have made consistent incremental improvements mm -hmm. and they're better than they were a few years ago without mm -hmm. question. Yeah, I really like the Fisher skis for the simple reason that they make me feel like a super competent skier. Because of my leg injury, I have a hard time on a ski that puts a lot of bridge out in front of my foot. So the Mazus F2 and the Solomon skis are really difficult for me to climb on top of and feel mm -hmm. really good on. Mm -hmm. I need to feel centered on the ski mm -hmm. and the Fisher skis all have a more centered feeling with a little bit of a contained bridge mm -hmm. and they, um, they make me feel in balance for aft. They make me ski more aggressively. They give me better access to the positions I want to be in. And they allow me to produce really good skiing. Mm -hmm. They're not exciting in terms of the camber response. Fisher has for years and years uh, really pursued a relatively low camber, strong finishing ski. Mm -hmm. so it's a stiff bridge with a lot of snap and elasticity beyond full weight in that, in that last little push. But uh, between half weight and full weight, there's not a ton of activity in the camber there. The lowest uh, camber action ski of the three brands that we, um, that we work with. But they also work best in that lower camber range. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've, they've chosen that path. It makes for a ton of versatility in the conditions that they'll work through. And possibly not the most exciting to ski on, but mm -hmm. very predictable, rewarding, and they focus, I believe, on the strength of the skier instead of trying to nail the perfect ski. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yep. Okay. So we agree? Yes. <laughs> Good. Um, two new models. The big news is Helium. This is new internals, new price point, more expensive ski. This is the latest greatest and Fisher Marketing has been and will be all about helium. All of the World Cup skis are gonna say helium on them. It's, it doesn't show up all that much. It's the little darker logo up there. It's a little different pattern on the sidewall and it says helium down here as opposed to, you know, 610. It's also got a new tip stamp. This has been the DK model, whoops, for a while. And it says, that's not gonna focus, is it? Well. You'll have what to take our word say? for it. It says DK, you see? Okay. Instead of 1Q, it's DK. It's been that ever since it was put onto the World Cup a couple of years ago. This ski has been used on the World Cup for a while. Every time Fisher introduces a new construction, this is the pattern. When they first came out with Carbon Light, the skis were on the World Cup before they showed up on the market by a couple of years. 
and then they show up on the market and they're a little unrefined and it takes a little time for them to really uh, center the bell curve on production and nail really reproducibly great skis. This was true right through 2008, 2009, we were selling uh, RCS skis because they were really reliable to racers. Um, and then the carbon lice became the standard. And then with the introduction of Speedmax, they showed up first at the Olympics in 2010. They came to market in 2013, but those 2013 and 2014 Speedmax skis were generally not quite as good as the carbon lice skis that had been in the pipeline for a while. And so they were the realm of kind of early adopters and they became really good with a little re-engineering on the skate side in uh, 2015. Uh, that 2015 production starting in the spring uh, became really good and it's been onward from there. This is a new core and it's a little bit of a return to the concept of carbon light with the core including transversely mounted air core material on the sides to lighten the requirement for thick side walls structurally. So that's where a lot of the, the weight savings and, and how much weight from. are we talking about? You feel it. Uh, we would have to weigh them. I can do that. I haven't. I'm not that interested in weight. I'm interested in ski ability and feeling, and they feel lighter. They don't necessarily feel lighter than other brands. As we're skiing them around, like in Whistler, I skied these a bunch. I skied Julia's World Cup skis. I skied, I was testing Matsu skis and Solomon skis for Diggins and Rosignol skis for Elena and the the standard fishers and the Rossies both felt heavier than the others if I paid attention to it. But when you're just focused on the brand, stepping from one pair of helium fishers to a pair of Speedmax fishers, it wasn't like it was life changing. Mm -hmm. We're looking for skis that perform really well. For the past couple of years, the helium skis have not been adopted at a super high level on the World Cup. However, the newest productions are definitely getting more attention and getting raised. Julia had a pair at Super Tour Finals that was really good. Curiously, and I really didn't expect this, both Pat and I tested this pair alongside Julia's race ski. This doesn't have a fancy aftermarket grind. This is just a factory P51. And we just waxed it a couple of times and, and put it into the test with a zero wax along with Julia's skis. And it felt like the same product. Julia's were a little faster, but they've also seen a lot more work in a you know a race grind. Mm -hmm. um, this this feels legit. It, feel, it felt really good. Um, it's a good feeling ski. It's going to be in super, super limited supply. It's a higher price point. We're talking very few coming into the country for next year. I really wish Fisher hadn't pushed so hard on the marketing on these because really the Speedmax remains their flagship race ski until this thing comes into full production. But make no mistake about it, this is the future of Fisher skis. This mm -hmm. will be the model within a couple of years and that means the price points are going to go up throughout the industry because fisher is always leading that charge mm -hmm. and it um and it means that early adopters can have access this year i've been told by fisher us not to expect to get more than about 10 pairs mm -hmm. uh, we've already got a couple of requests where i've said yeah you guys get first selection I'm not going to put them on our form or anything. It'll have to be something where people contact us directly because they want the heliums. But I also, I don't think it's something to get super excited about. It's not game changing at that level. Well, it is a really fundamental material change. It's incremental steps forward. And I think it just keeps Fisher at the forefront where they, they've they gotten accustomed to being. How about this other model, the, the Speedmax 61K? Yeah. 61K as opposed to 61Q or 610. This is a camber modification. And this is a ski that's interesting because as far as any of the World Cup techs that I've spoken with are concerned, it, this designation doesn't exactly exist in World Cup skis. I know the cambers exist in World Cup. There are a lot of camber variations that are being put onto the World Cup mm -hmm. and they're designated with lots of extra stamps or different designations. and. It's really hard to keep up with. They're very, very active testing things. They make skis by request. They make skis as experiments. They put them out there. They gather information. The 61K is a camera modification to reduce the the um, the bridge length 
and smooth out the transitions, make a floaty ski with a short bridge for soft conditions. Whistler was a great place to test it. What's interesting about this pair, I didn't mention to Rick Halling actually, they've got a monster two millimeter reel in them. Sorry, Fisher. <laughs> Did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Lena Sutro raced on these in the 45K at the end of the championships because they were great. Yeah. They're really good. Um, so what were we going to do? She's a Fisher sponsored athlete and we hand structured them and race waxed them. So, you know, that's how it goes. Send me test skis. We're going to test them. And they were good. I felt like right out of the box in the Whistler conditions, these were a little more impressive than the Heliums. The Heliums felt good where it was hard and not hard per se, but like firm track. But as soon as we got into the slush and it was every day we were getting into slush, the 6.1Ks were good. Um, I like them as a overall ski. They have that really gathered, contained feeling. They're easy to ski on for me. I feel like I'm standing right in the camber, you mm -hmm. know, like in mountain bike terms here between the wheels. Mm -hmm. It feels really balanced and, and a great way to ski. And I don't mind that, that shorter wheelbase. Do you remember the mods who skis a few years ago with the two dots, like the blue black yeah. dot, you know, mm -hmm. that feeling of like, you're almost on a roller blade. It feels playful and yeah. really kind of nimble in a way, especially yeah. in soft or chunky conditions, unpredictable mm -hmm. conditions. I like those skis. The stability comes from a different place. It comes mm -hmm. from kind of access and control rather than really elongated edges, mm -hmm. but they float really well and they carry speed really well. If you're looking for a, a soft condition ski, I think that's a, a great place to look. That's a really nice camber. And I feel like they, that camber concept can work as well in soft new snow as it can in soft slush. I don't That's think what it's, I was wondering. So yeah, it's not a slush ski. It can work really well in slush. You can bury the old Swix 2 mil right on there mm -hmm. and uh, get us some more grinding business to flatten back out. But there, um, we see this overall throughout the, the, offerings from all brands that in slush conditions you really need to stretch those contact zones and lower those angles to keep the skis riding high because mm -hmm. if they start punching or you know like cutting into the slush too much it's a non-starter mm -hmm. uh, so but these these are equally nice in in new snow uh the only other change is a new is an update to the binding instead of twisting to 90 degrees to release, the twist is now like 45 degrees and, and you pop the binding out, which makes my least favorite binding on the market because it's too complicated and the pain mm -hmm. in the butt a little less objectionable. It actually makes a pretty significant difference because you don't whack your partner in the backside with your pole when you release the bindings yeah. if you're testing. It's a good change, mm -hmm. but it's a small change, but a good change. Yeah. All right, that's it for Fisher. How did we do? Do you think our content's any good? Yeah, sounds good.